OK. I think we're um, <coughs> ready to go. So, uh, so uh, we are officially 18 minutes left, uh, late. Uh, so um, I'd like to show um, a live demo of our uh, deep clustering speech separation system, single channel uh, multi-speaker separation. So um, what is? Um, what is a single channel speech separation? Well, uh, you have just one microphone, uh, multiple people speaking at the same time in the same microphone, and you're trying to uh, separate, get each of the signals separate. Uh, it turns out that this is very hard, and I guess everybody uh, in the room knows that it's very, that it's very hard. Uh, typically, you need multiple microphones to be able to do it to some extent, but um, uh, humans are able to do that pretty well. So uh, one of the, the goal of the 60-year-old cocktail party problem is to do that in machines. So uh, what is uh, our approach to this problem? It's called deep clustering. Uh, it's, the idea is that it's affinity-based training. Instead of training a neural network to classify each time frequency bin and saying, is it dominated by speech or by noise, for example? Uh, when it's speech versus speech, it's maybe not as obvious how we do, you do classification. Um, so instead of doing classification, we train the network to um, generate d-dimensional embeddings, uh, embedding vectors. Uh, and we, the network tries to come up with embeddings such that for each pair of time frequency bins, if they are both dominated by the same source, those embedding vectors will be close to each other. And if they're dominated by different sources, they will be not close to each other. So that uh, once you're done with the training, you, you uh, get a uh, test tolerance, uh, you get some uh, embedding vectors, and you just have to do k-means uh, to separate the, the bins into uh, those that are dominated by the same source. And uh, the cool thing is that it doesn't depend on the number of sources because it's only, it only cares about whether uh, a, two, a pair of bins is dominated by the same source, but there could be 10 sources in the, in the, in the mixture. Uh, so this is a math uh, formulation. Uh, if you, uh, get, you have your time frequency uh, bins, uh, you just consider all of them uh, as a giant vector. Um, I don't, this is working, right? Uh, so I is now a time, and, a time frequency bin. Uh, you, as, as a reference, you have the, uh, um, for each source C, so let's say here we have two sources, we, we have a column that uh, with zeros and ones, uh, the ones are the white dots that say uh, that uh, which time frequency bins is dominated by which source. So uh, if you had 10 sources, you would have 10 columns here, and only one, one uh, uh, per row. Uh, so the problem is that like you, you could have any permutation uh, of the source of the columns, and uh, it would still be the same uh, the same reference. Uh, so instead of because we don't want to do we want to avoid having to deal with permutation issues, uh, we rephrase the problem as um, trying to estimate the uh, affinity matrix, which is uh, uh, the scalar product between um, the the uh, row vectors for, two, for pairs of time frequency bins. And this is uh, permutation invariant. Wh whatever the permutation of y you use, uh, y, y transpose will still be the same uh, matrix. It will just have a 1 if the two bins are dominated by the same source and, and a 0 if they're not. And then we train a network to try to, um, to spit out for each time frequency bin i uh, a d-dimensional embedding such that, um, uh, and we normalize them, but that's technical uh, detail. We normalize them such that VVT uh, is going to be as close as possible to YYT. So if you have a sort of deja vu here, it's because John presented this two years ago on this very stage. Um, uh, the, the thing is that it's, these matrices are uh, time frequency bin by time frequency bin, so they're massive. They're just too big for uh, being, uh, being computed. So you think uh, you would be crazy to try to do that, to try to um, optimize the network such that the distance between them is small. But the good news is that you can actually uh, do a trick uh, the, the Frobenius sum between VVT minus y and YYT, so VT minus YYT, is actually, if you use the, the trace trick, you can rewrite it as uh, a sum of terms uh, that are much smaller. So not VVT, but VTV. Uh, so it's VTV is D by D, YTY -Y is um, uh, source by source, so like 2 by 2 in, in our case, for example. And VTY is D by uh, C, so 20 by 2, for example. So all these terms are very small. Uh, OK, uh, so how does it work? Um, uh, and we do all sorts of tricks to make it better. Um, we have end-to-end uh, -end training, this kind of stuff, but uh, no time for that today. Uh, here's how it sounds. Hopefully this is going to work. During the All right, let me turn the volume down. Should I turn it down or are you going to turn it down? Okay. During the long control, you moved up three and one-half, get it into four and seven-eighths. 
All right, uh, so this is a mixture. It's two male speakers. Uh, this is uh, how, the first speaker that we extract. British Petroleum moved up three and one half to 64 and seven eighths. And the other one. During the following year, he tried unsuccessfully to get it into production. Uh, so this is a speaker independent separation. So these speakers were not in our training set. Um, all right, so, uh, and I think this was the first time that anybody was able to do speaker independent uh, separation based on uh, discriminative training. Uh, before that, you had papers that, were, that even did like speaker pair dependent separation. But, so here we train on 30 hours of mixtures uh, using uh, Wall Street Journal. And the demo I'm going to present now uh, without further ado, uh, is actually using the, the model train on Wall Street Journal. Uh, so let's try it out. So uh, I need a volu uh, volunteers. Uh, Brian, want to do one? I think uh, somebody volunteered to do Farsi. So because this is also actually speaker independent and language independent. So you can do any language you want. Uh, so uh, Brian, you want to do uh, English or Spanish, what, whatever you want. Uh, I think uh, we, we had a volunteer for Farsi. So. Um, Go ahead. What do we do? So uh, you're going to both stand here, and, and uh, there's going to be three, two, one. When I switch the display, there'll be three, two, one. I'll be flashing, um, but you don't have to look at me. Just look at the three, two, one there. Uh, and uh, <laughs> no, so not too far, because like I mean, basically, like you guys should have pretty much the same. If one of them, is, one of you is way uh, louder than the other, it's gonna, it gets harder. All right, and um, so three, two, one, and then you speak, and, I, and, I, and I'll stop when you stop. All right, uh, this is this is gonna work, right? Uh, all right. So that was pretty low, but let's see if it worked. Like you were not speaking super loud. Well, I was trying to be quiet too. All right, so uh, let's see. So this is what was recorded by the microphone. All right, let's listen to what came out. Uno, dos, tres, tingües, cucara, maracara, All right. All right. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so this is running on my laptop. Uh, it's the it's the, the same code we've used to train the model. There's no, it's just like basically we took it, put it in the in my laptop, and it just works. It's on Wall Street. And it's trained. Uh, so it's trained on Wall Street Journal <laughs> American English, um, and that's it. <laughs> Nothing special. Uh, okay, so that worked. Uh, and uh, maybe now, just um, for the interest of time, let me move to uh, uh, actually. Uh, so. We can actually have a, just a little bit of fun on the way out. Uh, oops, I have some example sentences, but you don't have to. Uh, we don't need, you didn't need them, so. Uh, maybe, so deep clustering actually be our last, <laughs> a last resort to keep our sanity. Uh, so let's try, let's try that. Um, we can maybe try, the use case is to pre preventing uh, ma man interruptions. <laughs> is this gonna work? Wrong. Wrong. It's just, I mean, so, I mean, there is music in the background, so we don't know what's going to happen, but uh, let's see. National death of the United States. There is playing a really, that is absolutely proved over and over again. We actually have. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for the sake of fairness, I guess we have to play the other one. And I mean, we, we could have probably improved on training on the word wrong, but uh, we didn't. So, um, uh, okay, that's it for me. Uh, thanks. And uh, papers, demos, script on our website. Thanks.